Hi. I know. Y'all hate me. Well, not everybody. So, I know I've been putting a lot of pictures out there, and it is buyer beware on the internet. And I don't want to point anybody out, judge, accuse anyone at all. And then instead of like trying to put posts and help people out, I'm just going to make like a video and I'll put it out there people can watch it. Because, yes, it is buyer beware, totally. And I've been victim of that recently, like a couple weeks ago. I'm still learning. I've been buying online for like 10 something years now. So I learned a little bit and I'm just going to pass on my thoughts. Instead of, you know, trying to put posts that anger people, I'm going to put it all in one video and then people can watch. So, first, you know, I'm not better than anybody else at, at buying anything. I've just been doing this for a very, very long time. And the fact that I understand algorithms, like search algorithms, help me be able to find things that maybe other people don't necessarily know where to go. And when it comes to knowing if something is quality or not, I learned the hard way. I learned by mistake. And back when, you know, because at one point in time I did work and I made a lot of money, I, you know, fixed stuff. I was an ATM tech and NCR and all that kind of stuff. And I lived alone and whatever. So I had a lot of fun. So if I, I lost out on some money, at that time it didn't matter. Thankfully I learned my lesson then. But I don't want anybody else to, to lose their money. And I'm not trying to call out anybody here. Again, the whole markup thing, I have no problem with the markup. It, it makes sense. The markup just needs to make sense, you know? And the descriptions sometimes aren't... They're not... They're misleading. They're not lying. But as a consumer, if you're someone who, you know, is it up to the lingo, you might not understand what you're getting. Just, just to educate. I'm cool with, you know, selling something a little bit more money. Because it can be good. There are people out there that just don't have the time to look for something on eBay or, or wherever, you know? That, that's not for them. They'll, they don't mind paying an extra 20 bucks for something because they don't, you know, want to go look for it or they got something else to do. But also when you're selling, you know, jewelry or something at $20, the person buying it obviously knows that there's no quality there. But when you start in the hundreds of dollars, people sometimes have the inclination or the thought that it is real. Now, we're not going to go into, you know, what's being said between them. We're not accusing anybody. But it is buyer beware. I mean, you can't do anything. So if you, you sell something or you buy something and it turns out to not be what you thought it was, you don't have much recourse. It's just how life works. So in order to help save a lot of headaches, I'm going to give you my tips on what I learned. So let's start with my personal foobar not very long ago like two weeks ago so yes I'm still recovering from my concussion today happens to be a day where I think the words are gonna come out in a right way but um we're gonna do limited editing because I can't handle it so I tried to buy this watch that's you know what it looked like and that's what it looked like on my arm like I, I tried it out it, it worked it did it did what it was supposed to but um, let's see if I can make it bigger. I can. So if you look here, there's a drop down. I hope you can see it. There's a lot of light. The drop down had my phone. My brand of phone. So I was under the assumption, that's the wrong word, assumption, that this particular, you know, smartwatch was going to work without me having to add a third party app which I did not want to do because my memory is pretty much full because I got music and stuff. I just didn't want a third party app. There is an app in here, the Huawei, whatever, just like smart Samsung health thing. So I didn't want a third party. However, I thought, you know, when I got it, I was like, oh, I'm just going to get my money back. No, no, it, it wasn't. It was really, you know, you should have known better was, was the answer that I got everywhere. So, and just to show you, Sometimes you can get your money back. So I have let me show you this later. So this was an ad of something that I tried to buy. Now this is what it looks like, the mirror. This is what I got. 
Now, I've dropped it and it's broken. But I got a, a opened up mirror with LED lights. That's what I received. Does that look like this picture? No, it doesn't. So in this case, I was able to, you know, go through eBay and say, look, item not as described. However, sometimes you have to be careful. And I do have an example of why. So you have to read the descriptions. You have to go all the way down. Because if somewhere is in there, they say something like this. Let me see. The images shown are not the actual item and are for your reference only. That's, they write that in their eBay sell part. You gotta scroll all the way to the bottom to find it. But seeing that that particular, I mean, I took that from somewhere else that I didn't buy just to prove a point like way back when and thankfully I kept it. But if they have something like this written somewhere and you didn't see it, and like in this case, like this could be an ad for the whole PS4 thing that years ago or sorry, years and years ago where people only got boxes and because they didn't read the description. It could be something extremely expensive. Oh, I just hit my camera. It could be something really expensive. It could, you know, a PS4, it could be, you know, uh, a watch or like a real, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what you're buying. If they have something like this on the bottom of their description, they can send you a potato. Like, sir, they can send you whatever the heck they want. A lump of coal, a potato, you know, a used band-aid, it doesn't matter. Whatever they send you, you cannot get your money back, even if it's like 500 bucks or more. Because this was somewhere in there. So you gotta read. But, again, do people know all that stuff? Some of us do, yeah, because we learned the hard way. But I'm trying to just let the people out there that... You know, I'm just gonna like jump ahead so that you don't have to learn the hard way because I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't want people to lose money. So, talk about the shops that you can have online. So, there's eBay. Now eBay, um, it's been around for a very long time and you either bid on an item or you can buy now. Either way, it's up to you. The buy now, if it's a price that you know, you're okay with, go for it always try to you know look at the money because sometimes it's different countries so it's different currency you'll have to make sure that you know the conversion and if you want to know the conversion you can just google you just put the amount of money and whatever currency they have to canadian dollars and it'll tell you but exchange rates change twice a day oh that's it twice a day so you know sometimes it might be different and then there's shipping sometimes it's free shipping sometimes the shipping is more than what the item actually costs you have to look at that as well and in this case of this watch I you know I could have gotten my money back if I returned it but returning it to Hong Kong was more expensive and I had to write a declaration you know custom stuff and wasn't gonna happen uh, and then there's things like Amazon. So there's Amazon.ca, Canada, which everything comes out of Markham, Ontario. That's their distribution center. Their customer service is A1, excellent, A+. Their agents are from the Philippines, so sometimes there's a language barrier. But they will help. They are, I can't say more. I've gotten a lot of things from them. No problem. Amazon.com sort of I mean I would still give it like you know five 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 stars yeah customer service is in the United States that's for sure but actually reaching an amazon.com agent is hard to find um, probably purposely but they want everything to be done by email and you can do everything by email which is, which is okay um, which is great when you're working with Amazon because I'm also gonna talk about like you know AliExpress and Wish. So AliExpress, I, I love it. No problem with it. They are a subdiary, I can't say that, subsidiary, there you go, of Alibaba.com. Now Alibaba.com is the Asian version of Amazon. And they're actually competing with each other. But on AliExpress, you have actual stores. The actual brands themselves sometimes have a store. So you're not always buying a fake. You could. I mean, that happens everywhere. 
gone on AliExpress, like, I know, for example, that on AliExpress, they have a born pretty store, which is nail products. I buy stuff for my nails from them. I pay like $2 for like five colors. I wait two months for them to come in the mail, sometimes three, sometimes four, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's not something that's essential. I can wait a long time because if I was going to buy it like from their website, like, you know, bornpretty.com, it would be like, you know, $17. So, and AliExpress's customer service is A1 plus, again, thank you. I've never, I mean, I've never had a problem with the customer service. I've had problems with items, but I've never had problems with customer service. Which is a whole other story. I despise them. Cuts. I mean, I know a lot of you are like, yeah, I love Wish. But did you know that Wish has other things? So, and I'm looking at my notes, because yeah, I can't think that much. They have cute. It's an app called Cute, where I, you know, bought something not knowing it was Wish, but turns out it's all right. Cute is mostly beauty stuff. Geek is mostly electronic stuff. Mama is mostly family-orientated stuff, and home is home decor stuff. They all fall under Wish.com. And yes, a lot of you are like, you know, but I don't, you know, I don't get it on time. I get my money back. Yeah, they do. But when you start to order a lot of things, like I was doing, after a while, they don't give you your money back. They give you a really hard time. Really hard time. And before I go too long, because, you know, I don't have an attention span. Mostly you guys don't either. Um, quickly, everything comes in from China. It comes in via, you know, British Columbia, which is the port of Richmond. And their tracking number stops once they get to Canada. That's why it's free shipping or $4, whatever. They're not paying Canada Post any money. That's why they never have a tracking number. So their tracking, as per wish, ends in Richmond. So after a while, they were trying to tell me that Richmond, BC, was my local area. And again, talking with wish is really hard. You cannot call. There is no phone number. It's all, you know, and all those other gaps too, you know, the cute, geek, mama, home, whatever. All the same thing. It's all through wish. And the only way to talk to them is by email. And yes, there's a language barrier because everybody on their end is Chinese. They're from China. They're in Hong Kong. And they use like a Google Translate. You know, they get stuff from all over around the world and they don't speak every single language. So sometimes, you know, you put something through Google Translate, it doesn't necessarily come out on the other end. Even when you get messages from them, like I have read them, they kind of don't make sense. But, you know, I gave up. I totally gave up. They just would not accept the fact that Richmond is on the other coast. Whatever. Anyway. That's my story about Wish. I'm no longer going there. But to go back to Amazon, I trust Amazon 100%. Because they have, I mean, if you pay through PayPal, then you have like an extra protection. And if you don't have a PayPal account, every time you use a credit card, it automatically pays it through PayPal as a guest account. So you could also dispute things through PayPal as a guest. Learned that recently as well. But Amazon has this thing called the A to Z, or Z, whatever country you're from, right? Uh, protection. That does take a little while and they do need um, to investigate. I've gone through it for my makeup brushes. Let me find them. These ones, I'll insert the picture if I can, of like, you know, it's kind of cut. Yeah, they were broken. I had to glue them back together again. And, you know, I put the claim through and when you put an A to Z, when you put a claim about anything, like you received an item that was broken from Amazon, the seller does not have the right to contact you personally, which they did in my case and I didn't know. So A to Z steps in and they take care of everything. Uh, but again, when now, which kind of is a bummer, when it comes to Amazon, either Canada or the United States, they're, they're trying to compete with, you know, AliExpress and Wish and whatnot. So they have third-party sellers as well. So you have to be careful because that's where, you know, knockoffs and things that aren't necessarily the real thing happen. They try their best, though. They, Amazon has a thing. Like, if you can prove that a store has sold you something that's counterfeit or not real, they will close them down and they have fines. So they try not to get in trouble. They don't really want to get in trouble at all. Uh, so Amazon is really there on your side to protect you. 
they, you know, and again, when you talk to somebody, mostly if you're emailing Amazon.ca and emailing in Amazon.ca, you're either going to have someone who can speak English or French that is reading your email. So that's great. At least like, you know, there's no language barrier. That's pretty neat. Um, but not everything, again, that you buy there is, is crap. It's not. Um, some things are and some things aren't. So we're going to go through a couple other things. So, so these are a few things that um, you might recognize some of them on, you know, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying. These brushes, um, I, I had a set of these. They're, they're, they're not very good. Um, you can get them for $7 and probably like $2 shipping. These mermaid brushes, same thing. Um, these little brushes, I know they're out there, okay? But I'm not saying who you are. I, I actually I have no idea. I gave up on that. That's the price. It's free, $4 shipping to get them. So the person selling them, the, you know, I don't have a problem with it because their markup, what they're asking, isn't a stupid amount too much. I think it's reasonable. So if you don't want to wait the three months for this to come from China, buy it from the person that's selling it on Marketplace. Totally cool. I'm just letting you know that you can find it on Wish for Cheaper or whatever, AliExpress, if you choose to. But if you don't want to, that's fine. They're not doing anything wrong. The markup is acceptable. It's not a crazy amount. So, but when it comes to makeup brushes, you know, you can get quality ones on Wish and AliExpress. And I have two brands that I will mention that are there. So the first one is Jessup. If you see anything with Jessup, go for it. They are cruelty free and vegan. No, sorry, Jessup is only cruelty free, but their quality is A plus, extreme awesome. The next one is this thing that I cannot say. Guyuishi or something, I don't know what the name of it is. But why I'm saying that is because I have some. I, I bought them um, without like knowing this was, you know, I paid like cheap money for this on Wish or something. And they work very well. Um, I've given some of them away, you know, because I, I replaced them with you know, these other ones who are also very good, by the way. Um, not a problem with that. The, these are definitely worth it. They might be like six or seven dollars, but they're still great quality. They work amazing. And these are cruelty free and vegan. The only thing is sometimes they get a little bit loose. Glue them back together. That's all I do. Glue them back together. For seven bucks, I'll glue it back together, okay? I'm poor. And there's also makeup brands. Now, makeup brands, hmm, what I, I really, however, there is one that will work. So it's called the You Can Be brand. And that's the Twilight palette. So this is, you know, Twilight and Dusk. I've reviewed it before. Um, it's, it's, it's worth it. It, it. it is. Not, not, nothing bad about it. You know, I paid like, you know, six or seven or whatever. But if you have anything with this brand, you can be. You can actually look this brand up. They have an actual website. They exist. They test things. They have quality control. And they are also cruelty free. So that's great. So if anything with this brand comes up, go for it. <sighs> Sorry. It's really warm in here. So that's that part. Now, now I'm going to get into counterfeit things and how to look for counterfeits. So next part. <laughs>